with Jesus. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. I am excited because we're starting a new series called Parables with Jesus. And this is episode one. This is the first one. And this one is called Parable of the Mustard Seed and the Yeast. But uh, uh, the series that I'm starting, it's, it's basically Parables with Jesus. We're going to go through them. All the parables, not, not, I don't know if I'm going to get every single one of them, but uh, uh, I'm going to do a lot of them because Jesus spoke, always spoke in parables, and those are stories. And uh, uh, we're going to decode them, or we're going to break them down, because it's not really much to decode. You just got to have a, a heart to hear, amen? So, but before we get started, let us pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord God, and open up our ears, our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our souls, Lord God, to be able to receive your word, your blessings, Lord God, your confirmations, Lord God, your visions, Lord God, and that you would direct us, Lord God, and guide us to do whatever you put us in this earth to do, Lord God, that we may reach our destiny because we know that it's a great one because you are a great God. So we thank you, Lord God, for this. In your precious name, amen, amen. So, I'm excited. Parable of the mustard seed and the yeast. Okay, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 through 33. Matthew chapter 13, 31 through 33. Okay? And, 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 and like I said, we're going to be going through a lot of parables this is just the first one of many to come. So get ready. So Matthew chapter 13, verse 31, it says this. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch on its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took, mixed it in about six pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. So this is talking about internal growth. It is talking about spiritual growth from the inside. It is talking about small beginnings starting from small little things that can grow to become great and huge things but it starts with small see a mustard seed is very tiny it's it's very small but yet it grows a big crop it grows and it grows fast it grows tremendous and the same uh, uh, goes into the 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 yeast a yeast you mix it with uh, um, with flour and other ingredients and, and, and it makes the bread bigger. It makes it puff up. It makes it, but you have to pound it in there. You have to mix it, pound it in there to get it right inside of it. You have to mix it real good. And the same thing goes with, with the mustard seed. All right, you gotta put it in the soil. You gotta put it in good soil for it to grow. You can't put it in bad soil. So in these parables, Jesus is saying, listen, the mustard seed and the yeast are the same thing. They are both God's word. Okay? So you are the good soil. You can be bad soil if you want, but I want to be good soil. I want to receive God's word. So right now, you're receiving God's word. And if you're paying attention, you're being good soil. You're receiving God's word, and it's planted in you, and eventually it will grow a harvest. And sometimes, like, like the yeast, you got to pound that word in there. Okay? So sometimes we as preachers, we got to pound that word inside of you. Because some of us, like me, are very hard-headed. And, and we're, we... I got to hear it more than once. I got to read the word more than once sometimes. I got to go back to it because I am hard-headed. So first time I'm like, I don't, know, I don't understand this. But I start to, to read it again and again and again, and then it begins to 
begins to grow within me. It's like, ah, that's what you're talking about, God. So, but this is talking about small beginning. Yeast is small, it's little, but you put it in some dough and it grows, right? You can feed your whole family with a loaf of bread and, and things, right? And the same thing with the mustard seed. It's very tiny. You put it in good soil and it grows. So do not overlook the small little things, small beginnings, okay? Watch this. In today's society, everybody wants to do something big, something grand, something magnificent, something great. Like, look at me. Like, this is what I'm doing. This is so huge. But see, Jesus is talking about the small little things. So today's society, we're, we're looking at red carpets. Uh, if somebody does a movie, it's a grand opening. Uh, 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 parties, right? Sweet, sweet 16s. You know, they have big, huge parties on TVs, uh, uh, things like that. It's, it's, it's go, go big or go home. That's, that's what we say. Go big or go home. But Jesus is saying the opposite. Start little. Do the little things. Don't overlook the little tiny things, like this mustard seed, like the yeast. Do the little things that other people will not do. Don't overlook the little details in life. Start little. Because when you start little, with the good soil, with good yeast, it will produce big. When you start little. So, watch this. And I'll give you an example. Jesus being the almighty God, the all-powerful God, the, the magnificent God that he is, when he was born, he could have came in uh, 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 with a big thunderstorm or a big, uh, uh, a big announcement in the clouds, like, like a bomb flashing with, with a cloud coming in and angels singing and all, all kinds of crazy things, right? He could have made a big splash on the world and say, here I am, oh, right? You like that? Oh. But no. He came as a little baby in a little manger, right? And when he started his ministry, he could have said, okay, uh, uh, I'm God. I, I, can, uh, I can ascend upon the clouds, and I'm pretty sure God has the voice to go over the whole world, right? But no, he preached to a couple people. Isn't that amazing? He started little. He preached to 12 disciples, right? And now we have the gospel going all around the world because of the little things that he did. Another example, Jesus could have said, you know what? I'm God. I'm not going to walk from town to town. I mean, right? He could have called on some angels and said, hey, fly me over there. Or he could have just flew over there himself. Or he could have said, cloud, come down, ascend it on the cloud, and then just started moving, right? I mean, he's God. I, I know if I, I wouldn't have been walking. I would have been like, ah, this is, this is a long walk. I'm just going to, I'm just going to take it easy, right? But no, he didn't, he didn't overlook the little things. He did what other people wouldn't do, Right? I mean, he washed his disciples' feet. I mean, he's God. He, why would he wash his disciples' feet? He did all the little things. He set a great example for us to start small and watch what God does. When you start small, he grows it. It becomes abundant. It becomes a great harvest, just like a mustard seed. When it grows, it is a big harvest. All right? So don't overlook the little things in your life, like reading your word, spending time with God, praising, worshiping, spending time with your family and your loved ones. Don't overlook the little things. Those are the little things. In, in your job, whether you, you uh, are unemployed or you own a company or, or uh, you do a ministry, don't overlook the little things that you could be doing. Now. I'll give you 
a great example. There is a man called Richard Montañez. That's my Mexican side, Montañez, right? Richard Montañez. Now, he went from being poor, right? From being a janitor at Frito-Lay to inventing what a lot of people, and I'm, a lot of you guys probably eat this, is the Hot Cheetos. But he started as a janitor at Frito-Lay. Small beginnings, small starting. He went on to invent Hot Cheetos, which is now a big success, and now he is a multi-millionaire. But he started cleaning the shops, the bathrooms. Now, in an interview that he gave, he said, I would make sure that I cleaned the bathrooms and all everything so when people came in, they said, this is the cleanest thing I've ever seen. I mean, he made it shine. He gave it his all at the little things. Most people wouldn't do those little things. But see, those little things is what makes the success. It's what makes the difference. Making your bed in the morning or, or just the little things that you can do in life. Don't overlook the little things. Like I said, Hollywood wants us to say, oh, look at us. It's a big, great deal. Go big or go home. But no, Jesus is saying, do the little things. Don't overlook the little things. So, be willing to put in the time, work hard on the little details to better yourself or your craft. As a, a, a people that are professional athletes, they do the little things to be great. So you don't see them, you might see them like a basketball player. You, you don't see them practicing hard a lot of the times. You just see them game time. Football players, you don't see them practicing and working out and doing, putting all the little crafts that they do. That way when it's game time, they are ready to go. They don't get there by a professional actress, athlete, actress, athlete doesn't get there by chance. They put in a lot of hard work. And they say, oh, well, he just, or, or, or successful businessman. All of a sudden they say, oh, he, he was an overnight success. But in reality, there is no overnight success. It's the little details that they were doing before that made him, that got them there to be what everybody sees as an overnight success. There's no such thing. It takes a lot of little things to get there. Unless you can say, okay, what if you win the lottery? Yeah, you can win the lottery. But statistically, everybody that wins the lottery, most of it's like 90% or 90 something percent, I'm not sure what it is. Don't quote me on that. But what they say is that mostly the people that win the lottery, by about one or two years, they lost all their earnings. See, you can't skip the process. Do the little things. You want to be successful in life? You want to be successful in, in, in whatever your craft, your, your business, your, your ministry, your, your, uh, um, your, your passion is? Do the little things. Be willing to work hard at it. Change your habits. Change your mindset. Change your attitude. Change yourself. And watch how you change the world. It starts with the little things. It starts with the little things. That's what Jesus is saying right here. Right? So, be a good soil or be a good dough. Right? The soil from the, the seed. The dough, the yeast is the word. And we are the dough. Some of us are a little doughy. I know through Christmas and everything, I got a little doughy there, so. But God is beginning to shape me. He's beginning to mold me, right? So I'm trying to get back on track. But don't overlook the little things. Amen? And that's, that, that's it. I don't have much more to say to you. 
because I think I said enough. But watch. Okay? It starts within inside. Change your mindset. Change your outlook on life. Change with inside of you. And then you can change the world. All right? So God bless you. And, and tell a friend about this. Okay? And I got a lot more of these parables with Jesus coming up. So this is the first of many. So share this. And, and, and I know that you're going to be blessed. Amen? So let us pray real quick. God, we want to be the good soil. We want to be the good dough, Lord God. Lord, plant your word. Grow it within us, Lord God, that we may be mature to do your will, Lord God. I thank you right now for everybody that watched, everybody that got something out of this, Lord God, that you may bless them and, 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 and abundance is coming on their way. It starts with the little things. We thank you for the, your many harvest of blessings that you are about to instill within us, Lord God. And we thank you that they're about to come out. We thank you, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. God bless you. See you again next Sunday.